Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Free Home Brew bringing you the next video in the list of the uh, Maze Generator video series. So um, we'll be spending some time um, untwining the uh, the source code for the Maze Generator. Um, I'll just get right into this uh, because th this is just the setup uh, for now. The uh, the Gen Maze function is the actual function. Uh, I import some random stuff, uh, some stuff from random to. Uh, make the decisions for the uh, algorithm. Um, I import something from Pygame for, uh, to export my images to .png uh, files, so um, but this is not part of the algorithm. Um, area and small are two empty ar uh, two arrays full of zeros uh, of these sizes, so these are the basic, uh, this can be used as input for the maze generator. Uh, same with window and w start and start. These are vectors or tuples, um, and these are these are points that can be used as starting points for the maze generator. So um, that's that. Uh, Devgen none is a function that returns an uh, that returns a double array of width w and height zero uh, height h full of zeros. So you can make uh, you can make another empty maze using this function, or you can only can specify the width and height. Um, these all seem pretty complicated. It, it, it's all not too too difficult. Vsum is the uh, is a function that will sum two vectors of length two. So it takes a vector a and a vector b, which are all which all look like these, and it, uh, it will take the uh, zeroth element and the first element of either and add them and return another uh, vector. So if I take these two uh, as input, it will return 42. Comma uh, 32, 42, comma 32. Um, clip clips the value of x between 0 and m. So if x is below 0, it will return 0. If x is above uh, m, it will return m. Uh, f map. Uh, there are a lot of binary operators in here, but um, basically it maps 0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. to 0, 1, 0, min uh, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, etc. Um, Gmap uh, uses fmap for this purpose and it maps 0, 1, to, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 to these, point, uh, to these vectors uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 1. You may recognize these as 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 left, and 1 down, which will be significant in later. Uh, parts of this video. Coor is a function that will take a vector a, uh, direction d, uh, this is an integer, not, not a vector, um, uh, an m and an n, and I'll tell you what this does. Let's see, we've got a g map of d, so d will be a number, an integer, uh, tra translated to a, a direction. It will add it to uh, the vector a, so it will add a point to a direction, a direction to a point. It will take the x coordinate of that, and it will then clip it to the value of m, and the same with the y coordinate and value of n. So basically, um, this can this can be used to detect if you're dealing with a point at the edge of the maze, which we will see. In the upcoming part, um, gen maze uh, takes a maze and the start po position as arguments. Maze is an uh, empty square, uh, an empty uh, er a double array of zeros. It doesn't have to be a square. It does, however, have to have an odd number of uh, uh, entries. Its start point has to be an even number. Um, and Pia, uh, well, Let's just uh, continue from here. Um, maze at the start point will be value. Uh, we'll get the value of one. So the start point is obviously uh, accessible. It, it's a legal piece of uh, pathway. Um, let's see that in this video. So this is the start point, and we can see all these zeros lying ar about. And when I move the uh, point. These are uh, these are ones that have been added. So this one 
that's that's this one over here. Uh, PL is uh, PL is the point list, and um, this is the stack it uses for the backtracking mechanism. So a point list is all the points in the list it remembers. So these are all the this is a list of all the green squares, and this is the start. So so, so what we see over here is this point over here. This is the entire list of points in its memory at this point. Um, D0 is the next direction it's going to head into. D1 is its previous direction. So this is this one is ahead of this one, more or less. Um, let's see. These are the conditions for the algorithm to keep carving. While the length of the point list is larger than 1, i.e. while there are still green squares on the field, when it still has decisions left to make, uh, it will it will do all this and when it's done it will export the maze to a png and it will return the maze as a double array so we can already tell that when it's done it will export a an image of the maze um, p, p is pl point pop so p is the top point uh, the point in the point list at the top. So this I already explained this is going to be a stack and pl.pop takes the last entry in this stack, the, the top entry, and returns it to the value of p. So this one is actually taken out of this array, this, this list, it, it will be removed and it will be put into this, val this variable p. So p is a point. Uh, p is the last point in the point list. Uh, NPL is a new point list. NPL is the uh, is what we can see over here. Um, it's a, it's a list of coordinates uh, relative to p in every direction r. So r ranges from zero to three. Uh, it says four, but that's a, it, it, the max value r is going to get is a three. That's how range works. So um, we've got core, let's go back to that function. Core will take uh, p, r and the length of the maze minus 1 and the length of the maze minus 1. Uh, this is the vertical axis, uh, vertical area and this is the horizontal length. So uh, this is the vertical length and this is the horizontal length. So core, if we remember core, core clips these two values and it uses these two values to clip and p is the point for the position and r is the direction so th this is going to be a list of all the points relative to p in every direction so these are the purple squares npl is the list of purple squares and at this stage there's not been a check for if it, there's a zero or a one beneath them so npl at this stage is all these purple squares including the green square and it's now all of these purple squares including this square over here and npl uh, at this point in this line is going to be x for x in npl so every point in x in npl that's already present in npl um, will be kept in npl if the value at that point is uh, zero. So only the points where the uh, maze is still zero will be kept. So now these, this list of NPL, new point list, is the list of purple squares. So these are the purple squares, this is the orange square, and these are the green squares. Okay, let's move on. If the length of NPL is zero, i.e. when there's no more moves to make, when there's no more purple squares, that's what this says, the new point will be the current point. So the current point, uh, so it's, if it can't make any more moves, let's see where that is the case. Ah, here. When it moves into this direction, it has no more moves at this point, it will remain at this point. We don't see it in this output, but it will. Um, if there if the length of NPL is larger than zero, or if it's not equal to zero, so it, it, it has to be larger than, um, NP will be a random 
uh, purple square. Choice makes a random purple square, uh, takes a random purple square. So NP is one of these purple squares. Uh, the previous direction, the, the current direction will be stored in the uh, previous direction indicator, and the new direction will be the sum of vectors of uh, its new position, so the purple square, plus the negative of its current position. So the different, basically, this is NP minus P. So it's this point minus this point, which is this direction relative to the orange square. So it. it D0 is a vector, that's the difference between uh, this one and this one, or this one and this one, either one. Um, okay, so D0 is in the new direction. If the new direction is not equal to the previous direction, so it, when it changes direction, that's what this is, and when the length of NPL is larger than 1, i.e. when it's not forced into a new direction, um, we append its current position to the new point uh, to the point list. So uh, whenever it changes direction willingly, uh, it the, the point is appended to the point list. And, and we've seen that this happen in the previous video. So this is this uh, having this video along with the imagery is really helpful. Um, if the new point is not equal to the current point, so if if it's if it's moved, if it's allowed to move actually. If it's allowed to move, um, we take this point, oh, I'll explain this one first. We have the maze, and the new point um, of the maze will get the value of 1. So when it moves, the, the next, come on, when it moves, the next point will get the value 1. So it will be, an, uh, it will be an, a pathway. And this line over here, we can see st still see the maze and the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate again and the 1. But this part over here, which is similar to this part over here, is, um, you can see, this is NP0, so the x-coordinate of this point and the x-coordinate of the previous point divided by 2. So this is the midway point. This is this is all the points between the orange one and the purple one. So th those are those are carved as well. And the fun thing about this is that we don't need if and else statements. We can just if it moves up, it means that it doesn't move left or right. So this will be zero. So this will evaluate to zero, and this will evaluate to one if it moves up. If it moves to the left, this will evaluate to 0, and this will evaluate to minus 1. So this is implicit in the computations. Um, the if and else statements are not required. Uh, let's see. It, so it can carve whenever the point is not the current point, uh, so when it moves to a new position. And uh, when it does move, PL will be uh, appended, the point list will be appended with the current, uh, with the new point. So. Uh, whenever it moves, this point is now added to the point list. And I'll tell you why, because th that seems strange. Why put the most recent point to the, po to the point list? That's because I pop it again over here. So um, it, it adds this point because it pops it over here. So it can proceed from its previous uh, incarnation. And we can see when it when it when neither of these conditions are met, it doesn't add the point. So it will then start backtracking to the previous points in the point list, which is to say, if the direction is um, um, let's see, if the direction is the same and it didn't uh, if it didn't move basically, because this is when it changes direction when it does move, and this is when the points are not the s when when the points are the same, it moves back. It doesn't append the current position, so it moves back to the previous posi position. So um, there's no condition. Uh, the default condition is that it will move back to the previous positions, which is not something you have to write. You have to write out. So it's implicit that it will move back to the previous positions. Hence, there's no piece of obvious piece of code for that. So I hope this is um, this is uh, this is now. I hope you all comprehend what I try to tell you here, because uh, you know shorthand notations are 
you know, they get on people's nerves, I've heard, but I really like them. NP, it's new point. P is point. NPL is new point list. Point list is PL. So I don't, I don't want to scroll horizontally when, I, when I'm programming. So um, I hope this has been uh, educational up to this point. May, GenMay's output does the same thing, except it generates a log uh, to which it writes lines. Um, and it, it, it exports maze as detail, which is to say it generate it, it exports uh, these images. So that's 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 the part of the algorithm I used to generate Im intermediate imagery. Um, for the functions, export functions, this function will export the maze as a string. Uh, this will export the maze as an image. Oh, print maze, and this is export maze. This one will export the maze as an image. Oops, you can see here. Export maze takes maze and file name. Uh, and it will run through the maze. Export maze color walls. Does something. I'm guessing it takes... It takes the val it takes the sum of the um, surrounding blocks and then uses that to determine the color for the walls. So uh, kind of like an edge detector. Um, export maze details exports these. So it takes a maze, a file name, a point list. These are backtrack points. Uh, age. I don't know exactly what age means. NP is the new point. And NPL is the purple point, so H is probably its current position. Um, well, that was the video on the source code. You can, I, I'll see to it that I'll upload this to my website and put the link in the description bar. Um, I hope this has been educa educational. You've learned a, a few things from this video. And feel free to comment, to uh, rate and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the fractal generator video.